Hey guys, just thought I'd make a short video updating what I've been up to. I think I need to fix my priorities a bit. The main goal is to make scissors that function as a ballot song. Something cooler and more useful than trainers for people who can't get ballot songs or want something different. It needs to be able to have a button that clicks up and down. In one position, the handles are floppy and the two scissor blades are locked together. In the other position, each handle locks to one blade, functioning as scissors. Anything else, like a spring opening mechanism or titanium handles, decorative elements, are all secondary to making that main mechanism actually work. I made one steel pair that did accomplish that goal, but for a variety of reasons, I thought I could do better. In my last video, I realized my new ballast scissor mechanism didn't work. One of the handles was permanently locked to the blade. It couldn't flip around. I thought I had made a simple mistake, but the problems were harder to solve than I thought. I thought I had fixed it, but I was wrong. So I tried again. I came up with another idea. I made a model with a larger round section on one of the pins. It complicated things a little bit, but at least it seems like the handles are correctly engaging again. I said I wanted to make more small scale tests, but I ended up getting ahead of myself, I think, and screwing up. So let's go back to 3D printing again. I printed out just some blades and pins and a handle, and I made them slightly larger so I wouldn't have to worry as much about inaccuracies of the printer. I don't know why I printed out the handle. The parts go together a little tight, but that doesn't matter. That's a distraction. Back to the scissor mechanism. And I did find a problem. When in bally mode, the scissors are supposed to lock up due to there being a larger diameter than can fit in the groove. But the pins need to be able to turn with the handles to swing around. Because of how in fusion you create parts and lock them together with joints, I never really noticed how the blades can actually move slightly open because of all this extra space I have on the opposite side of the groove. Seems kind of obvious now. Well, I guess it's good I didn't make another whole pair of ballast scissors right away. Yay! So, back to the drawing board. Or computer. After a few hours of banging my head against the wall, I had an epiphany. I realized that the square sections of my old design, maybe they don't all have to be lined up together. So I gave that a try. It didn't work out quite as I hoped, but I started messing around with the idea of a three position button. Instead of locking the scissors closed in the same button position as locking them into scissor mode, they would be separate positions. Up for scissors, Center would be ballet mode, and down would be for locking the whole thing closed. It might work, but then I'd have an even bigger button that sticks out more and could get snagged on things, and so maybe I'd have to make the blades even thinner or something to reduce that, or I, I'm not sure. Plus, you know, I lose the benefits of going to the round pins that I wanted to do before in the first place. So, maybe that'll be a good concept to remember, but I decided to start over. But the three position model kind of made me discover another problem. I want these to function and feel like ballast songs. Ballast songs usually have tapered handles, or they at least flare out. That's why I have to deal with the double square problem, or by switching to round pins, I got the two slightly angled flats on a pin, and then a hole with only one flat. Anyway, I've been designing the ballast scissors with the handles really close together. When I first started, it was only like 10th hour or something. Now it's a little bit less extreme, 32nd of an inch or something like that. Still not a lot. I don't want the handles to bang together when swinging them around. In the first steel ones, they did. 
I figured that was just my imperfections in the manufacturing, and as I made better ones, that problem would go away. But look at my latest one again. The handles actually flare out more than they should. They're supposed to be parallel. But I can squeeze them together. And then if you consider play and wear over time and screws loosening or extreme flipping, I feel like it could be even worse. There's a limit to how far apart, both aesthetically and mechanically, I can separate the pins at the top. So I thought maybe I would just play it a little bit more safe and do what other battle songs do and add a slight angle to the handle's resting positions. But here's what I realized from thinking about the three position button. Right now in my working scissors, you lock the handles as scissors, which is fine. You unlock them, then you swing them around, and then you lock them again. So you can put them in your pocket or whatever. But they're not really locked. They're in scissor mode again, but backwards. I knew this, and I didn't think of this as a problem, because the scissors can't open because the other handle gets in the way. So what happens if I don't want the handles to bump into each other and I make the handles further apart? By discovering this problem, I sort of partially discovered the solution to it too. I went back to round pins. I want to use pre-ground stock, I want to be able to use bearings, I want to use snap rings. I think it's the way to go. And I got rid of that extra large section. The problem I initially had was the extra space around the pins. After a few more hours of headbanging, I thought, why does everything need to be round? So I tried making this little bean shape. Now this section can slide along the groove but it hits that back wall so that the blades can't over travel in the wrong direction. I printed out this concept and I made it even bigger and got rid of the blade so it print faster. I make separate files for these 3D prints so that I can make these changes. I added some extra room around the holes cause I wasn't sure if uh, the pins would be too tight. And I also merged a pin to one of the blades so that I could have an easier time messing with them. This seems to work better. You can scissor, then you press the button, or buttons, then they can rotate, and then you push them back, and now the back side gets a little bit caught. So it kind of locks the blades together, sort of. I think I'm onto something here. If I make these pins with non-round cross sections, that means I can't make them on the lathe, which means I probably have to use a T-slot cutter again. Dun dun dun. That's not really that big a deal, but I'd like to not use quite as fragile of cutter as I did in the last video. So I decided to get rid of this inner curve on the bean shape and just make it a flat section. That way I don't have to worry about using a small diameter to fit in there. I can use a bigger T-slot cutter. So I printed this one out too. And I added these little caps to make it easier to align the pins in the right position. After looking at this print, I made some more adjustments and got rid of some more unneeded geometry and tried doing another print. I also decided to try getting rid of the extra space that I had added. This seems great. Scissors. Then rotating handles. Then locked pins and blades. Great. I had realized something interesting. I made a pin that can't rotate 360 degrees. Only a limited 178-ish degrees. Which is what it's supposed to do. I didn't really mean to do this, but it's interesting. I printed out another pin that matches. Normally, bell songs have a pin in the blade or in the handles, like mine do, 
that stops the handles from over traveling. Being able to not use these and just use the pins that hold the handles to the blades themselves to limit the rotation is kind of an interesting concept. I might explore this more in the future. I like how I end up with pins that have less material removed because of the strange shapes. It makes them seem stronger. Or at least I don't have to worry quite as much about things getting out of alignment, which was also part of my goal of making the pins that move with the handles. But now there's the awkward part. Making the button click up and down. I think I'm still going to try the snap rings. I messed around trying different things for a while, and I think maybe I'm going to try putting them in the handles. I don't have a lot of room where there's a good place for them. I talked about how I don't need the divots to be symmetrical in my last video, and but I think I'm just going to try using a rounded T-slot cutter and just going a little more shallow and see how it turns out so I can do everything in the mill. I already have to add these flats and rounded corners I want in the mill, so it might be nice to just do everything and be able to make adjustments that are probably more accurate than my hobby lathe. I'm a little worried about the handles being too thin here, but I guess we'll see. Be a cool idea if I could make two of the bearing washer discs have a slit in them or something so that they kind of act as the snap ring somehow. But I don't know the best way to do that. So I still think I gotta take it slow. I think the next step will be to make a metal test piece. But maybe it won't exactly be actual scissors. Just want to focus on getting things perfect functionally, not aesthetically, yet. See you next time.